down in the city of Kegel Harbor. There have been a lot of conversations lately on a number of different I issues as the city of Kegel Harbor continues to change. And one of those issues is parking. To join us to talk about that now and more is Chief of Police John Fitzgerald back with us on the Megacast. Chief, thanks for being back with us. Morning, Tyler. How you doing? Doing all right. How are things over in the heart of the lakes? Oh, they're doing great. Thank you very much. Warm weather, nice uh, summer going on. Things are going very well. Yeah, it's good to hear, and it's always, and summer's always a busy season over in Kegel Harbor, and uh, as people are coming into the city to and spend time with, with friends and with family down the, by, the, by the lakes and to, of course, enjoy the time on the water and all the activities that they can they can make in Kegel Harbor, that, of course, causes a little more congestion in a rather small city, which is why parking has become a really hot-button issue of late, of late. A couple weeks back, uh, of course, the Planning Commission had a, a lengthy discussion on parking in the city, and the City Council plans to speak on that as well coming up. Um, right now, what are some of the main issues with parking in the city of Kegel Harbor that are concerns to residents and, and to those in city leadership as well? The main issues are actually in Kegel Harbor, there is no parking on any streets at any time. Um, there's signs at the entrance of the city and on many of the streets that uh, indicate this. And that's because our streets are so narrow, we have to keep them free for emergency vehicle traffic and even for our residents to, to move in and out. Um, we're pretty lenient if it comes to, you know, you, you live in Kegel and you're having a special event, you know, call the police department a few days ahead of time. We'll make a note, uh, we'll get your phone number and we'll, we'll give some permission for somebody once or twice a year to have uh, an event at their house that they can utilize some on-street parking. We'll have a phone number so we have an immediate contact if we have an issue that we have to move a car for. But if they don't call us ahead of time, we don't know about it, we haven't talked to them, they end up getting issued the tickets for parking on the street. And once again, it's it's all about access for emergency vehicles and for uh, the sanitation trucks, the, um, the GFL trucks coming through. Uh, our streets are very narrow and, and we need that room. The other parking issue comes up on weekends most of the time, weekends and holidays, people come in to meet friends out on the sandbar. Um, they can't get them all on the boat, so they tell them to come and park someplace in Kigo and come through one of our beaches to walk out on the sandbar. Well, there's very little available public parking in the city of Kigo Harbor. It's just the way the city is built, the size. Um, you know, some people utilize the, the parking lot at, at Roosevelt School, but most of the private businesses are posted as towaway zones because the businesses need those parking spots for themselves. So it, it's happened a few times this summer. People have gone out to the lake, come back, and their cars weren't there. And it's not because the police are out looking for them. It's because the business needs those spots to keep running their business. And, you know, all these restaurants and everybody who had such a hard time through COVID are trying to get back on their feet. And if you block a customer from coming in because you want to go out to the lake, that's money they're not making and, and making it harder for them to stay open. So that's where our parking issues come from. And, and Chief Fitzgerald, on, on that note, you mentioned Roosevelt School as being one of those locations, but what are some of the other locations in the city? And I know there's just a few that are public spaces that are permissible for people to park in those situations when they're coming into the city to go to the beaches or just to walk around and, and, and for recreational purposes to use the trail, whatever the case may be. That's it. It's, it's very tough to find any public parking in, in Kegel. If you're going to use the parks, there's there's uh, like three parking spaces at Fran uh, Fran Leaf Park. Uh, there's a couple of spaces outside uh, um, Rose Sorter Park, which is behind City Hall. There's a couple spaces there on the weekends. You know we don't really care if somebody uses the City Hall side of the parking lot, um, which has you know, eight to ten spaces maybe, um, but that's not a lot for out there on the lake. And that's only on the weekends when, when City Hall is closed. You can't you can't block off City Hall uh, when it's open. Uh, other than that, there's no real public parking in the city. Everything else is, is commercial or private property or uh, residential. We had lots of public comment at the recent planning commission we meeting a few, a few weeks ago regarding the parking situation in terms of city leadership and, and discussions internally. Of course, uh, in your case, from the public safety pers perspective, what is needed in Kego Harbor to address this issue? Uh, the only thing that, I mean, some of these things that, that could change it, you really can't do. You'd have to widen the roads right. to make it so you can park on the street. And, and our lots, and for the most part, are too small to even think about taking uh, public easement area away from them because the lots in Kigo are, this was cottage country. These were not made as big uh, 
big suburban uh, rural lots. They're they're all tight together, and and the street's too small to, to add anything to it. Um, I'm not sure that there is anything else really to do unless we were to find some vacant property for the city to buy up and make parking lots out of but would it be in a convenient spot is it something that's fiscally feasible uh, that's what our uh, city council and planning uh, boards are looking into and that's what they they discuss and they find out and uh my end of it is is the enforcement and um enforcement and education end of it because i'd rather educate people that you know they can't park at certain places rather than give them a ticket as the enforcement part we're joined by Chief John Fitzgerald from the city of Kego Harbor's police department on the megacast today. And another issue that uh, is not just an issue here in the local area, but ha has been a growing issue throughout the U.S. over the course of the pandemic. There are several studies that are showing that speeding uh, has become an, an increased issue, especially as we have less police officers that are out on the road uh, in certain places on a regular basis. And for a small department, uh, like yours in, in Kego Harbor. How much more of a problem, if if any more of a problem, has speeding been over the last year and a half or so? For our department in our city, I don't think the speeding has been near the issue it has been in the, uh, like on the freeways, um, the the larger cities, larger streets. I can say that our, our staffing level has remained the same, so it's not that we've lost any staffing to enforce the speeding laws. Um, you go through Kego Harbor, you know you have two streets that are both 35 miles an hour. That's um, And we do and always have had people who have uh, violated that speed limit, but our officers have been out there and attempting to enforce it to keep traffic safer here. Um, it's, a, it's a small, tight city, and uh, and we're out there trying to do our job, which also is a reminder that school's going to be starting up again soon. And Roosevelt School is out there, and you're going to see – the police cars out in front of the school trying to uh, detour bad driving habits uh, coming around the school zones um and once again we're not here about revenue to write speeding tickets to to make money ours is to um enforce the traffic laws to make the streets safer for everybody uh, some of it may involve a warning to a driver some of it may involve a ticket uh it, it's whatever the officer who makes the traffic stop feels is going to be the effective manner in, in making this person a safer driver making the streets safer around here but you know kigo's done our guys have done a pretty good job of trying to keep a lid on it and keep um keep this from becoming a drag race area which you know there's just really not room for it here in kigo but you get out on the highways uh just going up north last weekend i saw some crazy driving going on around me and past me while i was out there so it's still out there a little bit it's um uh you know the roads are definitely getting more crowded than they were which gives people less room and less opportunity to do that kind of stuff. We're joined by Chief John Fitzgerald from the Kiko Harbor Police Department. Chief Fitz, uh, you've mentioned this on previous editions of the MegaCast. We, we talked about this last year before the schools uh, reopened for in-person learning. There are certain rules that go into place when you're in the school zone, when there are crossing guards that are out there that are different from the general speed limit rules. Obviously, you want to be yielding for anybody that's in a crosswalk, regardless of if it's a school, if it's school children or if it's just a regular person crossing the street. But what are the rules, particularly in front of Roosevelt School, in terms of speed limit changes during school zone times? Well, uh, we're gonna have to see what the school is gonna do for its hours this year. I know last year's hours were uh, completely different from any other year because of the COVID. Uh, I haven't had a chance with, to discuss with the principal yet what, what their hours are gonna be. Because last year they had two shifts of school, which were outside, some of the hours are outside of the actual posted school speed limit uh, times, which are, there's signs on either end of uh, on Cass Lake Road that, um, I tell you the times. Also up by Abbott School, there's signs for Orchard Lake Road too. But you have to obey the signs for the 25 mile an hour speed limit during the times posted. The other times, you may not know it's a school time because it's not posted and they haven't, the County Road Commission hasn't had a chance to change the sign. But if you see a police car with its lights going sitting in the center turn lane, you have to follow the law about the emergency vehicles. You uh, approach an emergency vehicle with the lights activated, you have to slow down to 10 miles an hour underneath the posted speed limit, which posted speed limit is 35. If our car's sitting out there with the lights uh, flashing, you have to slow yourself down to 25 to go by that car and through the area the car is in. And that's why we're sitting right there in the school zone. You know, we're not trying to hide behind billboards and, and get uh, catch you with gotcha tickets. You know, you came into the city and didn't slow down in time. 
we're right out in the open. You see us, it's a warning to slow down. It's, it's hey, there's kids around here, slow down. Also, you uh, mentioned crossing guards. They have a crossing guard out in front of the school. You have to obey that crossing guard when she or he steps out there with uh, the sign and raises that stop sign. You have to stop for that stop sign. You can't just, oh, they're in the middle of the road. I can go around either side of them. No, you can't do that because they're trying to get those kids across safe. And when the kids see the crossing guard with the sign up, they think it's clear for them to go. So don't don't disobey the crossing guard when they're out there. We're joined by Chief John Fitzgerald from the Keiko Harbor Police Department. Chief Fitz, uh, just another minute or so with you before we'll say goodbye today. Anything else that would be important for our audience to know about uh, what's going on in the city of Keiko Harbor? Well, you know, we're coming up to the end of summer. Um, it's, it's been a pretty safe summer around here. Uh, we still have time on the lakes left. Remember the um, remember the uh, the zones out there in the lake within 100 feet of another boat? You can't have a wake, so you can't go speeding by people on the sandbar. Um, just be careful out there. We don't want any end of the summer tragedies. We'd like to keep it nice. Everybody enjoy the time out there. And uh, please, I'd also like to say thank you to the citizens, uh, residents of Kego Harbor, Sylvan Lake, Orchard Lake. Uh, they express their appreciation for us an awful lot. Um, I know a lot of times that there's negative press going on uh, around the country about police departments. Uh, I, I can feel the support from our residents and and we're trying to be there for them to protect and to serve them and and uh and make them proud of us and and do the job they want us here for well chief we appreciate it thanks for joining us today absolutely try tyler have a great day